This is Mike. I'm ready to start. Thank you. All right. As I put angel, there will uh, be. Whoops. Let me turn. As I posted to Angel, there will be a substitute uh, Wednesday. Um, Paul Norad, one of the other CISS professors, is going to take the class for me because I'm not going to be here. All right. Um, he'll go over some examples and, uh, you know, feel free to ask him questions and feel free to email me questions if, if any questions remain uh, after class. If anything changes about that, like if he's unable to, to take over the class or something like that, I'll post it to, to Angel. Uh, I also will not have office hours on that day. Uh, I post a complete update to my schedule. Both Tuesday and Wednesday are affected this week. All right. We left off last time putting colors on our web pages because, you know, the first few web pages we, ca we came up with, you know, all look the same. Um, when I grade lab one, typically every lab one looks just about the same. And that's what you'd expect, really, because we really haven't talked about enough stuff to give sort of variety in the look of the page. Now that we're starting to talk about CSS, we can talk about changing the appearance of the page. Um, before we go into more detail about colors on the page and, and so forth, I want to bring up sort of two things, all right? that we can talk about um, as far as that goes. First of all, sort of describing web development as being sort of a combination of two skill sets. And what's interesting about these skill sets is these are skill sets that you don't always find in the same person. All right. Good web development is a combination of technical skills and design skills. All right. The first couple of classes, the first couple of lectures were focused almost exclusively on designs, oh I'm sorry, <laughs> on technical skills. All right. What I mean about technical skills in the case of web development is learning the languages. In our case, HTML and CSS. We had a brief introduction to both of these, and each of these languages serve a role in putting together a web page. All right, and we'll we'll see. And as we go forward, um, I hope that that we're clear on the role of each of these languages, so that we can use each of these languages properly. HTML is responsible for the content of the page, and well, we won't talk about it until a bit later on. It's also uh, responsible for the logical structure CSS is responsible for the appearance as well as the physical layout. For now, let's just focus on content and appearance. To the degree that you can keep those separate, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for a couple reasons. It's a good thing because you can change one without messing up the other. All right. For example, um, within many websites, within many web applications, Angel being one of them, you can configure your page to look differently. I notice when I go around from you know assisting students if they're an Angel. People have different color schemes. People have different backgrounds, and so on and so forth. Angel is written with the separation of the content and the presentation or the appearance, and that allows you to change one without changing the other. All right, 
And we'll see more and more examples of this. And there's a lot of reasons why that's a good idea. Um, one web uh, site that I worked on, for example, changed their look uh, seasonally. They were a jewelry retailer. So around Christmas time, they had Christmassy colors. Around Valentine's Day, they had Valentine's Day colors. And so on down the line. That's one example. We'll see another example for uh, a school for the blind, uh, blind and visually impaired. Whereas um, by changing the color scheme and the size of the font and things like that, uh, people can make it easier uh, for those people that suffer visual impairments to see the page. All right. When you go to a mobile, uh, a site on your mobile device as opposed to um, a desktop computer or a laptop, sometimes you want it to look different. So by keeping the the way the page looks separate from the way that uh, from the content of the page is a good idea, and we do that on a technical level again by understanding these two languages and understanding how they're properly used: HTML for the content and CSS for the appearance. So that's what well, the focus was for the first couple of days of class. You know, what are these languages? How do these languages work? How do we make a link? How do we make a paragraph? How do we change colors? The technical. How do we use the language to do something? The design aspect of web development is maybe a little less concrete, but in, in my mind no less interesting. One thing I will say about design, and we'll talk about this um, you know, uh, in a lot more detail, especially when we get into the thinner book, the, the, the Jesse James Garrett book. Um, web design is not strictly about making your web pages look nice or look pretty or look attractive, however you want to put it. All right? To be sure, that's an aspect of it. You know, no organization wants an ugly web page. So you want your page to look pleasing and aesthetically pleasing. But that really is only the surface of web design. Think of automobile design. All right? um, automobile design is much more about uh, other things other than the way the car looks, right? To be sure the way the car looks has some impact on it. All right? you know, people like a certain look of an automobile, people want certain colors and so on and so forth. But I would argue that that's not the most important thing of automobile design. You know, how safe the car is. You know, that's probably more important than how it looks. Uh, what kind of gas mileage it gets might be more important than, than how it looks. Um, can someone fit inside comfortably? You know, being fairly tall, um, you know, that was a consideration for me. Had a lot of cars, my head was bumping up or very close to the, uh, to the, to the roof of the cars. I actually have a little Scion XB, and that car looks tiny. When you sit in it, there is a lot of room, all right? And it was designed that way. I mean, I have more headroom, more legroom than, than any comparably sized car. This isn't an advertisement, by the way, all right? Although, if anyone from Scion on YouTube uh, happens to see this, you know, and they want to give me a new car, I'll mention it in more examples, all right? Just kidding, folks, all right? Um, no, I'm not. Email me. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, at any rate, and then, and then there can be little things too. For example, uh, let, let me raise this question for you. How many of you know how to change the clock in your car? How many could tell me right now how to change the clock in your car? All right. That's pretty good, right? Prior to this car, every single car I had Every single time daylight savings time rolled in or rolled out, I had to pull out the manual. Because it was like, hold down the volume button on your radio while with your left hand, turn the volume uh, counterclockwise uh, while pressing the station tuner in the opposite direction. You know, it was all these convoluted instructions. My car now has this. a little turny thing, hour and minute, <laughs> all right? You want to increase the hour, you turn it that way. You want to decrease it, you turn it that way. Same thing with the minute. I can't mess that up, right? I can't forget how to do that. It's just obvious. 
I'll give you another example. Uh, approximately, well, I don't know. I would say once every two weeks, I turn the wrong burner on on the stove. All right? Why do I turn the wrong burner on on the stove? Well, people have theories. My wife probably has some theories, but let me explain to you why I turn the wrong burner on the stove. The burners are oriented this way. If you were to look at my stove. How do you think the controls are laid out? Side by side by side. So, what does this one control? I don't know. It controls one of them, all right? I can narrow it down to say it controls one of these two. But is it intuitive that this one controls this one or this one? I couldn't, I honestly couldn't tell you right now, even though using, you know, we've had the stove 10 plus years, I couldn't tell you what burner that one controls, all right? What if the controls were laid out instead this way? If these are the four burners and the controls were laid out this way, how often would I make a mistake? And if I did, I'd only have myself to blame, <laughs> right? I mean, hey, you can only do so much, right, with the design. There's a great book on, on web design in the library that's called Don't Make Me Think. And it, it kind of sounds funny, uh, but, but it's very true. Um, something is well designed, uh, you, you'll hear the, the phrase that people say uh, that it's intuitive to use. You know, that you just know what to do. You know, you don't need trained on it. You don't need to sit down and scratch your head and read a manual. You just know how to do it. Let me show you an example of one of the best designed websites, in my opinion. Our friends at Google. Is that a particularly pretty looking website? Not really. Why would I say it's well designed? It's easy. How can you mess this up? Right? How can you mess this up? There's a box to type in what you're searching for and there are two buttons here. Alright? Now if you want to, you can do advanced search or you can do some other things, but the basic thing that people come to, to Google for is to search. And they made that very easy to do. You're able to do some more advanced things, but the basic fundamental thing that people are using the site for, a person's goal for visiting, user, uh, for, for, for visiting Google is to find web pages. And they made that very easy. I always thought that I invented the saying, then I read it in a book and I was all disappointed. All right? In fact, they actually did better than me because they added a second part of it too. Uh, the, the statement that I always, I've always said in classes, I said that simple things should be simple. All right? To go to a web page and to go to, to a search engine and search for something should be simple. The person who, the name escapes me, who added on to what I thought was my quote said, and complicated things should be possible. So let's look at Google. Simple things are simple. You want to search for something, boom, there it is. You want to do a more advanced search, that's possible. All right? Those are the kinds of things I think that make a web page well designed. Not necessarily how it looks. All right? And I think Google, within their very uh, minimalistic design, does some cute things. For example, they change the logo uh, for holidays and, and, and things such as that. So, you know, there's... They're not, they're not totally uh, with, without, uh, you know, a, a, a fun, uh, attractive appearance, all right? But the most important thing is a site is well designed if it serves the goals of the people using it, all right? That's a better definition of a web page that is well designed 
in my mind, than a page that um, looks good. Can, does anyone care to volunteer a website that they think is either well designed or poorly designed? Think about websites you visit a lot. MSN.com. MSN what do you like about MSN.com? Well, you have a variety of subjects you can go to. Okay. It's fairly easy to navigate. Okay. Uh, you, have, you have a, a wide range of, of subjects and it's fairly easy to navigate. Um, one thing about websites that, that we don't really get into in this class, but we should at least mention, is the first thing that you said, is that there's a, a wealth of good information on it. You know? um, there's a phrase, content is king. In other words, people don't come to your website to admire your website. People come to your website to get some good content. And that ought to be the first and foremost, that ought to be one of the first and foremost concerns. The next one being that it's easy to use. It's easy for people to get what they came to the website for. Anyone care to volunteer either a good or, or another good or bad example? Yes? KOL.com. AOL.com. AOL. And good or bad? bad? And why don't you like it? I feel it's too cluttered. And okay. Okay. It's actually more fun talking about bad websites than good websites. It really is. But it can be instructive as well. First of all, just how long it took to load the page. I, I, I didn't have the, ca uh, the computer on. A lot of stuff, a lot of advertisements. It's a very long page. You can scroll for a long time. I will give credit. The search is pretty obvious to see. So that part of it's good. Yahoo. Alright. I will say that they try to, uh, they've moved the Yahoo search box it used to be like off to the side and, and hard to see. Uh, I haven't used Yahoo in a while, that's why I had to look to see where it is. But uh, over here. Really, the interesting thing is, is in a way, Google and, and AOL or Yahoo are, are, are trying to serve two different goals. AOL and Yahoo, they're, 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 they're going after people that want a, a page that's sort of their one-stop shop. That they'll go there, they'll, they'll catch some news, they'll do a search, you know, they'll do any number of things where Google is more exclusively uh, a search engine. All right. At any rate, we could go on about this forever. All right. And, and we probably will at some point, not go on for it forever, but go on in more detail. But now's not really the time for that. I do want to summarize, or, or I do want to conclude this portion before we go on to the next part um, by saying that my definition of a well uh, of a well designed web page as being a web page that helps the users do what they need to do helps the users satisfy their goals serve their goals is something that doesn't happen by accident all right doesn't happen by accident it happens as a result of a planning and a thought process all right in almost all my classes i spend a good amount of time talking about planning you know the uh, Bob, Bob Vila, the carpenter guy, always says what? Measure twice, cut once, right? Think about what you're going to do before you do it, all right? And it's funny, and you might even say, like, gee, why does he need to repeat this? I need to repeat it because in students and even in professionals, you see people that don't follow that and just try to jump in. Uh, the same book, by the way, uh, that I talked about the other quote from, that a lot of people have the ready, shoot, aim philosophy. <laughs> All right, they jump ahead and do what they want to do before they get a sense of what it is they really want to accomplish, and before they really aim themselves in the right direction. So it requires planning, and, and that's why in this class you're not just making a website for your project. You're planning out that website first, and then you're going to execute the plan and do what you need to do. Again, to summarize. Two skills, 
The design skill is figuring out what you need to do and how to create a website that helps your users achieve their goals. The technical aspect then is, well, what are the tags in HTML I need to do that? What do I need to do in CSS to get it to look the way I want to do? And so on and so forth. All right. Now to rewind back to where we were last time talking about colors. All right. And we did something like this. Went in here and made a web page. You know, typically when I start out, I make sure I have the shell of just the basic tags that are on every page. Whenever I add a starting tag, I also end the, add the ending tag. It's a little chilly this morning, so the web page today will make will be what I like about fall. some text in there. You're not here to hear me wax poetic about fall. So I'll put some text here. And we have this. Again, we have our basic HTML tags, start HTML and end HTML. That goes around everything that says, hey, this is the beginning of my HTML code. That's the end. So everything is nested inside that HTML tag. The HTML tag itself consists of a head and a body. The head is information about the page. Uh, the two things that we've seen to put in there so far are um, the title tag, all right, and the style code, which we'll look at in a minute. And then finally, uh, we have our body tag in which we have the rest of the tags, the stuff that's actually going to appear on the body of the page. I'll go and save this, going up to File, Save. I have to go in and change that from text document to all files. And then I give it a name that ends in a .html extension. Alright, so there's my file, fall.html, which I can either view in Notepad or I can view in the browser by double clicking it. All right. There's the title. There's my top level heading. There's my paragraph. Notice everything is properly nested. The title is completely inside the head. The head and the body are completely inside the HTML. And likewise, these are all properly nested. Um, notice also the use of white space. It really doesn't matter how I have the white space. The browser displays it the same. Therefore, I do my indenting and all that to make it more readable for me. All right. Last time we started talking about CSS code. And CSS code um, you can use to change the appearance of the page. Again, we're going to keep the content of the page separated from the appearance. One big advantage of that that I didn't talk about so far is I can take that CSS code, put it in another file, and have every page look at the same CSS file. And that has the advantage that I can change the CSS only once and change the way a bunch of pages look like. All right, let's go in and put in style code. I believe I omitted the type attribute last time, but strictly speaking, you put, should put that in like this. And 
then I said I can do something like this. Body, color, brown, background, orange. What will that do? Well, CSS is composed of a variety of CSS rules. Each rule follows the same sort of format. You have a selector that identifies what on the page gets this rule. What's this rule going to be applied to? So what things on the page are going to get this rule? In this case, it's the whole page, right? Because I said the body tag. So everything inside the body tag will get that rule. What's the rule? The rule is enclosed in curly brackets. The rule can be made up of several parts. Each part looks like this. I have the attribute that I want to change, the characteristic that I want to change. I have a colon, and then I have the value for that attribute. So in this case, I have color, colon, brown. Color refers to the color of the font. The background color is background. And background orange means the background of this gets to be orange. So if I go and save this, hit refresh, the page looks different than it did before. All right. Now, I can use any HTML tag as a selector. So, for example, I could say paragraph color white background brown. And how will the page look now? Well, Looks like that. What do you suppose the background color would be if I eliminated this? Now, if I just say P color white, what will the background color of that paragraph? I know the text color is going to be white. What will the background color be? Yes. We have a vote for black, vote for orange. Why do you say orange? because that's a previously defined. This is a cascading part of the cascading style sheet. In other words, I define everything in the body is going to look this way. I then make an exception for the paragraph and say the paragraph, the color is white. Well, if I don't define a background color for it, the color for the body sort of cascades down and, and, and becomes in effect for the paragraph as well. So the background's orange and the color is white. But I'm going to add brown back in. Now, the colors I've been using so far have just been the very basic colors, you know, um, red, green, yellow, brown, white. What different colors can you use? Can you type in any name? Well, not really, right? Let's go and look and see what the valid HTML color names are. And I believe I have a resource in Angel for this as well. So if I type in HTML color names, here's a list of the colors that you can use. Alice Blue, Antique White, Aqua, Aquamarine, Azure, Beige, Bisque, and so on down the line. There's a lot of them. Now, how are you expected to remember these? You're not. <laughs> You'll look them up when you need to. All right. Now, we can see very 
easily, if we look at this, based on what I've said about CSS, I could make literally every tag on the page look different and have different background colors and different um, text colors. Is that a good idea? No. One thing that I often say is that web development is sort of like an all-you-can-eat buffet. All right? There's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a lot of stuff you can try. But you want to be careful and limit yourself. All right? How many colors do you suspect would be a good number of colors to have on a page? Six? Anyone else have another idea? Three? Three to five? All these are reasonable answers. The point is, is, you know, 20 is probably too many colors. 10 is probably too many colors. You can get by with just two, right? So that two, three, four, five, six range is probably uh, an appropriate range, somewhere in there. Now, we talked about the technical versus the design, and we said the technical is how to do something. So technically, that's how you set the color of elements on the web page. Design-wise, why would you change the color of something on the page? A page can work well in black and white. Why change it? What are some of the reasons that we would use color on a web page? OK, number one is to focus attention. What can we use it for? First of all, to focus attention. If your, um, if your page is all white um, background and black text, if there's one paragraph that's in red, that's going to stand out. It's going to jump out at you. All right? So if there's something really important that you want to make sure people notice, if you do something different with it, now, this doesn't have to be the color, but that's what we're talking about now. You could also change the font, but we're not talking about fonts now. We're talking about the colors. So by changing the color, that's one way to draw attention to something. All right? What's another reason that we might use colors on a web page? Yes. Either, either one of you. Okay. Hierarchy? And importance, I would say importance sort of goes along with focus attention. Hierarchy, another way to say this is that we can group or structure stuff on a page with color. For example, in a magazine, you know, a lot of magazines have what they call sidebars on them. Let's see if this book has, yeah, perfect example, did not even intend this. Here's a book. All right. I don't know if you can read that or not. I guess it doesn't matter. You can, you can see uh, enough of it. All right. The whole page is white with uh, a black font. This one little thing is a sidebar. And it's set, a, set apart from everything else through the use of a different color. In other words, this background isn't white. This background is gray. All right, So that gives you, and in fact, in a way, it's good that this is out of focus, right? Because even if you can't read what it says, you know that this is a different group of stuff than this, all right? You get a sense of the structure of it even before you read the words, and even before you have any idea what they're trying to say in that. So color can be used to give hierarchy or, or to group or to structure the page as well. Um, was often done on many sites. Navigation's a different color. The banner's a different color. These advertisements or links are a different color. All right. So it's used to kind of group things together and I don't have the projector on. All right. But the main navigation is a different color than the sub-navigation. 
So the, diff the use of color sort of separates this page into its sections or parts. What's another use that we can use color for on a page? You had your hand up before? No, it was the grouping. Okay. Same, same thing, the grouping? Mm -hmm. Links are usually blue. All right. Yeah, to, to provide additional meaning. That may be his cousin to, to emphasis. And it's another quote that I thought I invented, but until I read it somewhere. Things that are the same should look the same, right? In other words, you don't want different links to be different colors, all right? If they're all links, they all should look the same, unless they're different kinds of links, then maybe you have different colors for them. But, for example, you know, um, you know, on this page, these are all advertisements, and they're all links the same color. All right? Those sorts of things can give you a visual cue, again, even before you absorb the content or the meaning. Your, your eye and your brain makes those decisions that, gee, these things must be the same because they look the same. All right? Just like your eye looks at bigger fonts and thinks that's probably more important than something that's in small print. All right? Anything else? Yes. Yeah, well, readability is absolutely uh, key for the color choice. In other words, you want to pick, regardless of all these other things, you want to pick uh, colors to make your page readable. What's the most readable color combination for background and font color? Yeah, black and white. White on, wh uh, I'm sorry, black uh, type on, on white. Um, what about the reverse? White font on black type. Actually, that's also very readable. However, your eye tends to fatigue reading that. So, um, the key though is high contrast. So, it doesn't have to all be black and white as long as there's sufficient enough contrast. You know, you don't want yellow on a red background, for example, but blue on a white or, or, dark, or light gray background can be very readable as well. It's great if you can give the user a choice because then they can uh, set their preference. Uh, the Kindle software on this gives the user a choice of what they want. So, you can pick that if you like that. You can pick sepia if you like that, or you can pick a white background. I don't like the pure white, but again, you can see there's still pretty big contrast between that. In fact, it may be very difficult to even see that that's not white on the screen, but when you're holding it, it's obvious. Yeah, again, <clears throat> where you can give the user choice, that is uh, you know, going to increase your usability, absolutely. What's another thing that would use color for? And let me ask you a question. Let's, let's go, let's, let's turn off the screen. Let's go to the official website for Barbie dolls. I'm, I'm guessing that probably not too many of you have been on the site lately. Maybe you have been. I'm not going to judge. All right, don't look. What color do you suppose the site has a lot of? Pink, Pink absolutely. Does an architect do? Check it Whoa. out and start designing. Oh my goodness. Where is the volume? There we go. All right. So what are they using color for here? How would you describe that? <laughs> Shock and awe. No, no, no. Not in this particular case. Yes? Attract the kids. Okay, yeah, to attract the kids. Uh, I, I, probably a more general way to say it, because um, we could go the other way too. Let, let's say, 
let's say we, we would pull up a, a, a website for your favorite heavy metal band. What color are they likely to be? Black, yeah, with white text probably. All right. So what are both of those, you know, probably the first time you'll hear Barbie and heavy metal bands compared today, all right, I would think. But what do both those usage of colors have in common? Yes? It, it is appropriate for their audience, or, or appropriate or, or appealing for their audience, and that's, that's what I was saying, appealing, appealing to their audience. audience. Yeah. Yeah. It, it to to use a marketing term is this, it's a form of branding. All right. You know, um, Barbie is associated with pink. You know, the stereotype of a heavy metal band is that all their fans wear black T-shirts. Right. And so it's a way of sort of identifying or creating a mood, all right, uh, is probably another way to put it, you know. Uh, a very serious, I'm going I'm to turn this off before I flip out here. Because uh, I could just see it off on the corner of my eye, like flashing and, you know. Um, but, you know, uh, one way to say it is that a serious site should look serious. A Fun site should look fun. Now, the word fun, of course, depends on who the audience is, right? Different people are going to have different ideas of that. But the point is, if we went to the Wall Street Journal site, and it was done up in the same style as the Barbie site, well, that's not very uh, effective use of color, right? That is, is going to uh, sort of, you know, it's going to damage their credibility. On the other hand, if you did the Barbie site, the same way that you did the Wall Street Journal site, you know, no kid's going to want to spend any time on it. So the key thing with this is, one thing to keep in mind is, you know, I can't say this is how you should design a website. You really have to take into account the individual situations, all right, and decide what's appropriate for that. But when you're doing so, consider these guidelines as good uses of color. I'll summarize that last one by saying mood or branding. All right, those are all reasons that you might use color on a web page. Now, we said before that there's no magic number as far as the proper number of colors, but we can say that probably, you know, the, the three, four, five range is probably the sweet spot. Right, it's probably right around there is probably a good idea. Now you can get away with a little more if, because in a way white and black don't really count, right? So you could maybe have two or three colors and white and black because they're neutral or even shades of gray. Now, we saw some of the names that colors can take, all right? But as you know, there's a whole bunch of colors in the spectrum, all right? How do you specify colors that don't have a name? All right, let's look back at the chart. You'll notice alongside each color is a code, and it says it's a hex code. All right. We are going to um, talk about, I don't know if we will today, if not today, then maybe Professor Nord will or, or I will next week, at what this code means. For now, just know that you can cut and paste this code. All right. So, for example, this is an alternate way of, expl uh, of, of, of naming a color. So I could type in blue, or I could type in as a color, pound sign, 000FF. Now, as I've been told constant times by many people, I don't know how to match colors. That's why I usually dress in something very simple because it's kind of hard to mess up a t-shirt and jeans. All right. However, when you create a website, you want colors that go together. 
And it's not completely a matter of opinion. There's science in what makes colors go together. All right, the wavelength and the frequency and all that sort of stuff. All right, so one thing that you can do is you can use some of these color scheme generators. And I think there's a resource, a link to it in, in Angel. Uh, I don't like that one. Yeah, this is the one I like. You can, for example, pick a shade that you like. Given back to our idea that, you know, we were doing a website about fall, maybe I'll pick a color that's in the orange range. You know, nice orange for fall. So I can pick maybe this color. And look, yeah, it's a nice set of colors that go with it. All right. This is actually a monochromatic design. There are complementary colors that you can use. There's a triad, there's tetrad, and so on. We'll keep it simple and pick monochromatic. And if we click in color list, it gives us those codes, and this might be a little hard to see, but it gives us the codes for those colors. So, for example, this shade of orange is FF7400. So, I could just copy that and put it in the page instead of orange. This is a particular shade of orange. Need to put the pound sign before it. This color of brown, I can put in here. And maybe I'll pick, instead of a white text for the paragraphs, I'll pick that color, a nice sort of pale orange for the. Now if I go and save this and view it in Angel, that's what we have. And I don't like that, all right? Uh, but we could play with it to get it to be something that we do like. Um, maybe we could go darker with it. Maybe we could go lighter, whatever. The idea is, is these colors sort of match, uh, whether you like them or not, or whether they're appropriate or not, these colors match uh, given the science of optics and the, the rules for colors and that sort of thing. All right? Any questions at this point? For your next assignment, I believe you're asked to create an external style sheet. I want you to try to figure that one out on your own. That being said, if you need a hand, by all means ask. All right, but it's important to be able to use web resources and figure out what you need to do. All right. Um, next class, again, I've supplied Professor Nora with an example that, that uh, he'll go over. And uh, again, if you have any questions from that or if any questions today, please let me know. All right, we'll see you over in the lab.